what do you learn from this activity? Can someone let the rest know? Can you share? Do you want to share? What do you learn from this activity we did? What do you learn? We tend to speak up and to talk faster children and we go in a quick way and there are moments that we have to slow down mm -hmm. so they rest mm -hmm. and they a uh, way to call the attention to the student is also to be quiet. <laughs> and we have to learn that. <laughs> Very wise. Very wise. Any other lesson that you learned? Any other idea that you want to share? That's okay. That's okay. Now, what do you think mindfulness is? Do you have any preconception? Do you have any idea what mindfulness is? Or what is mindfulness for? What do you think? Any answer is okay. So you can say whatever. Don't worry. Do you want to share? Come on. Keep your attention in what you are doing. So it works a lot on attention. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Any other any other description? Take it, take it. Take being conscious of uh, the way you are, maybe the way you feel that can change over time, it doesn't stay. So, so it is, um, keep attention, have attention, and being conscious. And there is someone else who wants you to speak. For us, it's a little bit the capacity to attend to the most important things in our real life and to have an intention and not, don't forget the attention to do them, these activities. So it is intention and it is attention and to be able to prioritize. This is what you mean, right? So to give priority to some aspects or tasks or projects. Hmm? Okay. Now what happens when attention fails, in your opinion? What happens when attention fails? Mm -hmm. and what happens with those mistakes? they can end up in a catastrophe sometimes. Yes. Okay. Um, so with these ideas, um, I want to, now that you have a clear idea of what mindfulness is, I'm going to put a brief video in which you have a very, very uh, expert explanation of what mindfulness is. So it is um, a very, I would say, learned and very um, erudite explanation of mindfulness. I hope the video works.
this is a very, very, very learned explanation from Maestra de Pueblo. Okay. And this is how Maestra de Pueblo thinks mindfulness is. Just for your ears, I'm going to play that again because the volume is really low, okay? But pay attention, it is so funny. Now that you have this expert explanation of what mindfulness is, I'm going to go back to what we already learned. So um, mindfulness is described as the combination of these three angles from this triangle. You've got intention, You've got attention and you've got attitude. These are the three key items, terms, concepts that we have to combine. I want to, I want to share with you the definition. This is the most uh, quoted definition uh, given by John Kabat-Zinn. John Kabat-Zinn is the person who started mindfulness. Uh, mindfulness started at the end of the 70s and beginning of the 80s. It was this person who did it. He is a doctor in medicine at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. So he's a doctor. And he realized that there were people who were systematically left aside, they were abandoned by medicine, either because there, were, there was no cure to their illnesses or because um, the treatments didn't work enough. The thing was that these people had pain and this doctor, he was, um, very interested in Buddhism and in Zen. And he decided to combine the techniques from meditation uh, and combine them in the medical school. And that's why mindfulness started. And this is the why it started. So after he started that, he as a doctor started doing research on that. And he created a program. Um, it is, uh, the program is called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction. And this program helps people to reduce level, levels of stress, levels of pain, and all the problems related to stress. And as you can see, uh, both teachers, parents, and children have problems of stress. So more and more mindfulness is being used in educational environments. It has started, of course, in hospitals, mainly to help people with um, terminal illnesses, to help them cope with pain, with suffering. Uh, but more and more, they have discovered that it is really good for educational purposes. So here you have the definition. Mindfulness means paying attention. So the first of these uh, areas of the triangle in a particular way, on purpose, so with an intention, in the present moment, non-judgmentally. 
So, attitude. This is the most famous definition that you have. He also has another definition which is really nice. Mindfulness is about being fully awake. So, you had already said that. In our lives, it is about perceiving. Perceiving. And how do we perceive? Through your mind, your body, your senses. So, touching, hearing, tasting, um, the exquisite vividness of each moment. So, we always go back to the present time. We also gain immediate access to our own powerful inner resources. Your inner resources are inside you. And they are there for insight, for transformation, and for healing. Not only healing your body, healing your soul, healing your feelings, healing your mind as well. Do you like that definition? But also, there is another definition that I want to share with you because this definition focuses on an aspect which for me is particularly difficult. And this aspect is in the second part of the quotation. Mindfulness is simply being aware, so again, being aware of what is happening right now, present, without wishing it were different. How come? Without wishing it were different? How come? Anytime something happens to us, we are wishing it were different, or we're very happy because it is the way we, went, we want it, or very unhappy because it is completely different. So, detaching from this attitude that we have, that we want things to happen in the same way we had thought of. So reality has to accommodate to what you want. This is what we do. But what does it say? Enjoying the pleasant without holding on when it changes, because it will, it will change. You cannot have this happy moment forever. It will change. But also, being with the unpleasant without fearing it will be always there because it will disappear as well. So let's go back to this attitude of non judgment, just accepting. If I have pain in my shoulder, in my elbow, if I have pain, I have pain. You cannot fight the pain by not wanting it. If you fight against it, the pain will grow. So whatever unpleasant happened to you, acceptance. This is the definition. Do you like this definition? So simple, so difficult. Your whole life can disappear in front of your eyes and maybe we die and we haven't been able to achieve this. But this is life. Okay. Now, I want, um, I want to tell you a story. Is it okay? I'm going to tell you a story. Can, can we breathe together one more time before I tell you this story? Yes? Okay. How do you feel in that position? How do you feel? Is it comfortable? Yes? Yes? Okay. All right.
close your eyes. Feel the floor in your feet. Feel your hips in the chair. Feel your back upright. Your arms in your lap. Relax your shoulders. Relax your face. Relax your tongue. Let's take one deep breath together. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. Well, um, there is this one story which says that um, Gandhi was in his ashram and a woman came to visit him. She brought a child with her and she wanted to talk to him and she said to him, Gandhi, I need you to help me. I've got a problem with my child. I have come here, I have been walking for two hours and I have come here with my child because I have a problem. I really need you to tell my child that he has to stop eating sugar. If he stops eating sugar, he will feel much better. I have tried everything, but he doesn't stop eating sugar, and I don't know what else I can do. As I know that he admires you so much, I am going to ask you to please tell him because he, has, he admires you so he will uh, accept your advice. Gandhi listened to her and he said, look, okay, I'll do it, but you need to come in two weeks. The woman, as you can imagine, she left and she came back in two weeks. This time Gandhi, when he was in his ashram and he saw the woman coming with this child holding her hand, Gandhi approached um, the woman and the child and he said to the child, look, I am happy that you came. I have to tell you that eating sugar is very bad for you. So you should stop eating sugar. When you stop eating sugar, you will feel healthier. You will feel much better. And the child said, okay, Gandhi, I will try, I will do. But the woman was not very happy. And she approached Gandhi and she said, you know that I have to work, to walk two hours to come here. Why didn't you tell this to my child two weeks ago? Gandhi said, well, two weeks ago, I was still eating sugar myself. So I couldn't tell your child not to eat sugar. So how often do we ask our students to pay attention. 
How often do we give our students tools so that they learn what it is to pay attention, how to pay attention? Would you like to accompany your students when they learn to pay attention? One minute. Okay, so I will play the ball and then the activity will begin. And then I will play the ball and the activity will finish. Okay? When do we start? Okay. Where is your attention now? Are you here? I know. I can feel it through my body. Okay. Look at the slide. Um, where are you normally? Your body is in the present. Your body is here now, in the present. And your mind, where is your, nor your mind normally? <laughs> Have you ever heard the expression monkey mind? Yes. Yes? Monkey mind? Yes, all the time, like a monkey. Jumping. Like a monkey, jumping. In Spanish, Mente de mono or mente mono, monkey mind. Well, this is what minds do. This is normal. This is what they do. It is their nature. They will keep on doing it. Don't fight it. <laughs> it will keep on. But we adults, are usually either in the past or in the future. Where do you think children usually inhabit? More in the present. So, if you try to help your children be mindful, maybe you should start looking at them and learning from them because they are our teachers. The more they grow, the less mindful they will be. They are very mindful, but we start calling their attention so that they start moving. And this happens with growth. Okay, so there is a difference between 
an adult's attention and children's attention. Our body is always present. It is only our mind which is traveling back and forth. So we go back to another triangle. This triangle is formed by the two parts related to the body. Sensations, which are sensations in the body, and emotions, because emotions take place in the body. And only our thoughts are right here, in the upper part of the triangle. So if we want to be aware of the present, we have to try to bring these three corners together. All right? So what brings you to the present? It brings you to the present, your body. How? Through your breathing, through the sensations in your body, through the observation of your emotions. If your mind wanders away, when you realize, you bring it back again to your breathing. You bring it back again to your body. And this is what you do the first time, the second, the one million, the two million times after that. Do you identify with this idea? I do, I do, I confess, I do. And sometimes one has an epiphany and stops running. Do you like that? Look, like in the Gandhi story, mindfulness is not something that you can take into the class if you are not mindful yourself. We cannot ask students to be mindful because they already are. <laughs> um, it's just that we need to help them, accompany them and be with them and guide them. But before doing that, we have to walk that path because we cannot teach what we don't know. Mindfulness is not telling you all these concepts. Mindfulness is helping you feel these notions deep in your bodies, in your hearts, helping you reconnect somehow. Um, this quotation is amazing. When the adult in the room, and here I'm going to say, when the adult in the classroom is transformed, the classroom climate changes too. This is the ultimate goal, not to introduce mindfulness as a strategy-based intervention but instead to change the overall climate, tone, and quality of interaction so that it is more conducive to the health and to the wholeness of teacher and student. This is what we have to do. How do you feel now? Are you listening to me with your minds or are you listening to me fully, okay? This is what we want from our students, but we need to stop. We need to change from the doing mode to the being mode. Let's be. I'm going to play a video, and after playing this video, 
I'm going to start wrapping up this workshop, closing this workshop after this video, okay? <laughs>